There's been a lot of controversy this week because Pal World released. It's very popular, and there's a little bit of Breath of the Wild. There's obviously Pokemon in here. There's some Elden Ring. There's base building like Fortnite. It looks like Fortnite. So it's an interesting foray into U.S. copyright law to explore what the heck is going on in this game. So, copyright issues. Well, one, I feel like this is the beginning of Elden Ring right here. This is what I saw when I left the sort of like first cave in Elden Ring. Is that copyright infringement? I think this is a great example that copyright does not protect more than what you've added, more than what you've added beyond a minimum, beyond things that have been created before, uh, basic elements of things, gameplay mechanics, for example, the look and feel of Elden Ring, or the look and feel of Fortnite, or the look and feel of Breath in the Wild. Those things are not copyrightable, so really anybody could just take the look and feel and start using it. Okay, so here is a fir my first little pal that looks an awful lot, that looks an awful lot like a Pokemon. I, I know, I don't know it was Pokemon, but it's a tiny little thing, and I would expect to, you know, be able to catch it with a Pokeball. And then here's something down here that looks like a lamb. It's called Lamb Ball. Gee, that looks an awful lot like something I know out of Pokemon. Isn't there a Wulo or something? Huh. Press Q to throw a sphere and capture a pal. Weakened pals are easier to catch. Hmm, this sounds so familiar. <laughs> Uh-huh. Can they copyright the mechanic of capturing another character in a sphere? No. It wasn't the white and red Pokeball. It was their own implementation of a game mechanic. You can't copyright game mechanics. Technically not copyright infringement. I totally sphered a pal, man. <laughs> what the hell am I supposed to do with it now? Check the survival guide. Okay. What should I do first? Pick up fallen branches. Gather a bunch of wood. Build a pal box. That area becomes your base. Make weapons and a pal sphere. Start capturing pals. They can be combat allies, nighttime can be dangerous, make a campfire, a torch, and a bit. Well, I mean, I've kind of already made my point here. I mean, I can actually punch to get stone. <laughs> okay, so, so far I feel like I'm in a cross between Elden Ring, Fortnite, and Breath of the Wild. I'm capturing Pokemon, or things that remind me of Pokemon. Oh, here's here's a meow, Meowth or whatever. Wasn't there a... This one's called Cattiva. It's a male. It looks an awful lot like something I've seen in Pokemon. You want to chime in on what this one looks like? I'll, I'll try to find it. Let's see. It looks an awful lot like a Meowth to me. It's pink. It has ever so slightly different proportions. Still has something on its head, but... I mean, this is, a, this is really reaching if you're trying to say that someone can copyright the ability to create a sort of generic looking cat character then nobody could create anything that looked even close to similar a jigglypuff face let's take a look at jigglypuff oh yeah i see what you mean that does look pretty similar to me is it exactly a jigglypuff face so there's three standards i'm looking for with copyright infringement here it needs to be either exactly or strikingly or substantially similar. One of the other standards or requirements is there has to be access. And I believe the developers have already quite publicly admitted that they've been inspired by all of these titles, all of these other 
games like Breath of the Wild and Pokemon and all that. So access, I don't think they're going to be able to deny access. So they had access. And then if they created something substantially similar after having access, then that's copyright infringement. If they create something strikingly similar, the standard is literally if the similarity is so similar... Ah! Hello. Can I get you back? How do I... Okay, I just hit E to get you back. Okay, I didn't know I could do that. If you are struck by, if shocked by how similar the things look, then you don't have to worry about access. Access is presumed, but is rebuttable. They can come into court and say, oh, I didn't have access, and they can prove it. If they can. And if there was direct copying, evidence of direct copying, it's not just similar, it's bit for bit, or we have evidence that you know someone literally copied the files from one to the other previous employee or someone with access to the underlying media files or something that's automatically copyright infringement almost really no defense to that unless you've got other exonerating circumstances like a uh uh i don't know like a license or something that you know you had permission or something facebook gave you permission by its terms of service that happened once in a Leibowitz case. So this is um, this is what I would call an edge case or a boundary case. They are they are testing the boundaries and the edges. So far, legally speaking, I think there's good arguments on the side that it's n not copyright infringement. It's close, but it hasn't reached a level of copyright infringement. It hasn't reached a level of use or a level of reuse that I would call copyright infringement. Being toyed with by a cativa is in many ways the greatest of disgraces. <laughs> so far, I'm definitely seeing all of the mashups and similarities, or I'm seeing a bunch of them. Yeah, there were definitely lawyers and copyright considerations involved with making this game. It looks like a cross between a fox and a horse and like a fanciful unicorn type thing. What are you? You are a shy creature. Hello. Come here often. An Ikethire deer. It parodies Pokemon's animal abuse by bringing it to the front. Yeah, I don't know. I, I think it's just a video game. <laughs> Build menu. Primitive workbench. Too close to, to a special boss. What? Yeah, here's the Fortnite. <laughs> the base building. But there's never been anything wrong with that. There's lots of building in games. Uh, Kaylee and I enjoyed the heck out of Grounded. That was a really neat one. Oh, there's the fire things. Uh, how do I use stat points? Lambo, Cativa, Chip, Chick, Chick, Chickipi. Fox Parks. Oh yeah, I've definitely seen this one before. What's the name of this one in Pokemon? Vul Vulpix. Let's take a look. So... What's protectable about this? Well, certainly the character itself, the way they've drawn it, exactly this way. If somebody drew their character exactly this way, that would be much more closer to an actionable infringement. Eh, they are pretty different. <laughs> I swear there's another one, though, that looks, that looks kind of like this. Or is this just, this is just literally Firefox, like Mozilla Firefox, okay. This feels like a point and it feels like a point and click game at this point. If there are many creatures that all have individually enough differences, could the totality of all the creatures still be infringement? Um, I think that argument is, yeah, yes, it, it could, um, but it also could go the other way. And if I was the defense attorney, I'd be saying, you know, look, every one of them is different. The setting that they're in is different. It's not a Pokemon game. It's uh, it doesn't substitute for a Pokemon game. It just scratches the same itch as a Pokemon game or a Breath of the, or, you know, Breath of the Wild or whatever. You know, they they can say we wanted to mash up all these mechanics and make something new. So it's either not copyright infringement because they didn't actually infringe on anything that was copyright protected, which is again not to say that Pokemon is not copyright protected, but rather. They didn't infringe on the things about Pokemon that are copyright protected. They infringed or, or rather used things about Pokemon that are not copyright protected or copyright protectable. Although 
I'm sure Nintendo or whoever owns Pokemon now would beg to differ. Their side is definitely going to be, look at how much they used. Uh, they're profiting off of the popularity of our characters, not the genre. People don't want to just buy a game with little pal characters. They want to buy a game with Pokemon pal characters. Pokemons are the popular pals, not just any tiny character made in the style of a Pokemon. So Nintendo or the owners are going to say that this is, of course, definitely copyright infringement because without, without it looking like Pokemon, it doesn't, doesn't sell. It doesn't, people don't buy it. And it's only people are only buying it because they were itching for a Pokemon game and this scratches the itch of a Pokemon game. I'm hungry. I don't know how to eat. How do I eat? Probably should go back to my, uh, my base and make something to eat somehow. Eat an egg. On whom? Me. Oh, hey, I'm not hungry anymore. Thanks. No, it definitely feels like Pokemon characters exist in a Breath of the Wild style open world with the sort of look and feel of Elden Ring and Fortnite. And I don't think it would be hard to argue that this is entirely something new, that the elements of copyright or, or intellectual property that were used are not the protectable elements and that overall this is a clever use of various pre-existing game mechanics and oh great my headset is going to die there we go hogwarts legacy stuff in there as well okay possibly definitely feel like i'm capturing pokemon but is there anything wrong copyright-wise, with copying the feel of capturing Pokemon. No, I don't, I don't think so. One of the things about Pokemon is that they're simple. You don't get more copyright protection for simple things, you get less. It's your time. I've come for you. You cannot copyright a style. You cannot copyright a look and feel. Not in the US. No matter what Nintendo wants it to be, uh, yeah, so, good question, Saijin. If Nintendo uses Japanese courts, which they can do, and we've seen that before, I I've personally represented people who have received copyright notices through Japanese courts. I represent them on the American side. Japanese courts have a little bit different, more strict view of copyright, and they may not like this. So, yeah, it's possible Nintendo might win something in Japan against the game, Starting with an injunction and maybe ending with a judgment of some kind. Um, in America, under American copyright law, I'm still falling on the side of this is not copyright infringement because it's not using the protectable elements. I mean, I can be ridiculous. Like, okay, like, let's put it as a storage box, you know, a copyrightable mechanic. No. Um... Again, if you copied their storage box, then it would be a kind of infringement, yes. Pal fluids? Oof. Oof. You have to mine pal fluids from pals. They don't seem to have fair use at all over there, is correct. Definitely throwing my Pokeballs, I mean, pal spheres wrong. Lost in the never-ending night. Man, does this feel like I'm exploring Elden Ring with a Fortnite look and feel? The Breath of the Wild climbing mechanism is in here. Pokemon are in here. This is weird. Hello, Milpaka. How are you? I can't hit you in the water. Get out of the water. It does. It feels like it's missing. The, like, the originality is that they found things that people liked about other things and made it, made it that. If you were looking for a mashup of these things, or you didn't know you were looking for a mashup of these things, yeah, it's a mashup of these things, and it's not terrible. Now that sounds like Breath of the Wild. Bottomless stomach. Sanity 18. How do I make a sanity go up? I'm not going to get out of the water over on that side. Oh wait, wait, it's, it's Breath of the Wild climbing mechanism. I should just be able to climb out just like Breath of the Wild, yeah. All right. Yeah, this is an interesting mashup. But this copyright attorney does not think that this is uh, 
100% clear that it's copyright infringement. Now, something did happen. I heard there was a mod to this game, and the mod did put the actual Pokemon in. I don't know how true that is. But that would definitely change things. Oh, we've got thugs here. Hey, finally. Yeah. So the Sparkit is obviously a callback to Pikachu, right? He's the sparky one. But honestly, like, you can't copyright a zigzag tail. It would have to be the actual Pikachu character. I don't have a parachute. I can't just jump off of this. Can I just, can I climb down this? No, I cannot climb down this like it is. <sighs> Do a barrel roll. <laughs> Low-grade medical supplies, an old sock, and a bottle of gin. So now if I toss out the fox parks and then press F, hold F. Press F, hold F. Oh, hello. Got one, yeah. It's my Fox Park side. Was expecting a legal document about Pal World. Now we've been discussing it the whole time. Um, sort of the short version is that copyright only protects certain creative elements. It doesn't protect everything. You, when when I draw a humanoid character and give it a human face and human hands and all that. Yeah, okay, I've I've drawn something, and most people would consider there to be some kind of intellectual property, but I also don't own and can't stop other people from drawing a humanoid character, for example. So, let's start with the basics, like, just having a humanoid character run around a video game is not copyright infringement, right? Whereas, if someone made the Pokemon game from beginning to end that would be copyright infringement. So somewhere in between is the line. And this game very nicely toes that line, like walks right up to that line. And I guess you could argue that it crosses it, but I'm arguing that I don't think it does. It's got elements of Fortnite and Elden Ring and Breath of the Wild. It has little cute animals that behave an awful lot like the Pokemon do but they aren't exact copies, and they are made their own element. All right. <laughs> She's driving one of them. Zoe and Grizzle... Zoe and Grizzlebot. Okay. Or Grizzbolt. Grizzbolt. Oof. Uh, hello. No, that's half my shield already. I don't even know how to get out of your way. And I'm dead. <laughs> this is my first boss fight. Yeah. 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 That was cool. That was cool. So, my verdict is it copyright infringement? It's real close, but I think that's the point. I think it's trying to mash up a bunch of different things. What you might see from here, you might see Nintendo take action. Somebody else could take action too. Uh, but you might see them take action whether, you know, no matter my opinion, whether it looks like Fortnite or Elden Ring or Breath of the Wild and Pokemon all mashed up, uh, it's still entirely possible for Nintendo to take action in Japan, to take action in the United States and ask a jury to decide. This is the kind of thing that would probably need to go to a jury to see if a jury agrees or not. And I, I think a jury might side that it's not copyright infringement but damn is it trying real hard to uh to walk right up to the line and yeah i kind of enjoy it i think i'll i mean I, i've played it for more than two hours i can't return it uh, i think i'll keep it and have a good time with it 
and maybe report back uh, as things develop. Not that terrible of a game. Um, kind of grew on me. Anyway, let me know what you think in the comments below. My, uh, my argument is that uh, they didn't actually copy protectable elements. In other words, there's nothing nothing wrong with making a penguin character. It looks like this size and, you know, these proportions and things. Um, Pokemon were always simple, so you'd really have to be making an exact copy. If you make your own tiny characters, I don't think you're infringing on Pokemon. Uh, but the closer you get to infringing on Pokemon, the more likely you're going to get the ire of Nintendo. And the reason why we're all talking about Nintendo and not Breath of the well. Breath of the Wild is Nintendo, but that, that's not what they've infringed on here. Um, or Elden Ring, or, 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 or. Is because Nintendo's the litigious one who is more likely to sue over people co copying Pokemon than any other company that I see has potential style, look, and feel in here. Anyway, let me know what you think in the comments below, and I'll see you later. Thank you very much to everyone who supports my channel. Remember, we're a community-supported channel. There's uh, no sponsorships, though the uh, In Motion people are offering me uh, to let me try out one of their one-wheel things, your unicycle wheels. Anyway, I don't think I'm going to sell out. Love you guys. I will see you later. Have a good one and enjoy. I'll see if I can make a video out of this. I do have some plans to drop more videos. Uh, I'll stop apologizing and I'll just do it. Uh, talk to you later. Love you. Bye.